first time walking in, it was very exciting. Being part of the planning committee and then get to see the finished product with the colors and just the spaces. There was so much natural light, which was one of the focuses that we wanted in the new building. The design team, I felt, was built very intentionally. And it was built to have all these different voices, to have teachers, to have admin, aid, specials teachers, trying to get everyone's input as best as possible, all involved in that process of bringing this new building to life. Coming from our previous building, um, having heat <laughs> and air conditioning that works, having uh, you know, no plumbing issues. Uh, you know, with older buildings, those are some of the things that we had to, to deal with. I know at my old building, there were very narrow hallways. Uh, it wasn't very inviting. So if the kids went out there to work, it was literally on just concrete floor. A lot of the behaviors that we did have in our old building um, came from transitions. There were a lot of long transitions um, out to the hallway, up the stairs, to the playroom, out to the playground. I believe it was seven years at Greentown. I was never close to the teachers that I was co-teaching with, and it took away the students' ability to focus. Um, because we would have to transition through the hallway with other students. It also sometimes would mean that they would lose internet connectivity and so they would have to get reconnected to whatever project they were working on. It was nice to see so many different viewpoints and we were really trying to make sure nothing was missed. We were listened to and ultimately what we were really hoping for, I think we pretty much checked all the boxes. The transitions here at the new building are very short, um, and so it makes it a lot easier for our kids to get where they need to be without having any issues. Now my classroom is literally right outside of my co-teacher's classrooms, and it's much smoother, and it allows us to continue that flow of learning without losing so much instructional time. We're closer now, so we're able to switch and really um, focus on each child's independent needs. Um, and it's also nice that we can open up the walls and actually be able to teach together, but also have that more independent learning as well. It's just such a welcoming space for students and for staff, and we have all the things we need to do our job well. Our ELA spaces are extended learning areas. So these are areas for students to extend their learning if they're doing group projects or they are doing activities with other classrooms. We have almost like a living room where we can kind of push into and do all kinds of different activities. I'm attached to an intervention specialist, so it's nice that she can just poke her head in, grab her kids, and they can just go right into the room. The kids have the bean bags, the tables, the whiteboards out there. Um, they have little nooks that they can sit in. There's just all kinds of space that allow them to sort of explore and um, learn in different ways. So the technology that we have now um, is very appropriate for our kids. So when we do games and activities up on the board, the kids are able to come up, the board is interactive, so they're able to use their fingers to draw on the board, to tap things, to move things around, um, which really enhances their learning. As an art teacher, we talk about light. We talk about how light affects the eye and the different types of light. So to have these beautiful windows um, that I can utilize the light coming in um, is an amazing fate for me. For the first time in my career, if I want to, I can turn the lights off and just kind of set a mood in my classroom where it's not pitch black. The kids still have the capability of working in the class space. love being able to give students what they need if they just have a bad day. I mean, even as adults, we have a bad day and sometimes we just need to step away from the noise and chaos of the world. In all of our previous buildings, the occupational therapist and physical therapist always had to find a spot and typically was not really appropriate for the students that they were working with. Um, now we have a large open area that is set up on the main floor specifically for them and whatever they may need. Every staff member has their swipe card 
and that there is no one in or out of this building that does not have one of those cards or should have access, be it a, a substitute that has to go through our security system at the main entrance to get in and out, um, or any door that has our security swipe system. Security was a huge, huge thought in everyone's mind when we were designing this building. Also, with our means of egress, can we get the kids out when we need to get them out? And we can. And all the drills we've already done this year and fire department in to help us out with that has been a good process. Combining five buildings into two um, was a big undertaking and I think it's just uh, just a blessing that we have these that we can walk into this new space and just be thankful for you know what we have. If I had the opportunity to say anything to the community it's thank you. I mean this is this is amazing and this is the best place I've ever worked um, as far as design set up, the feel of it, the community feel of it. I've been in the district for um, 20 years. I grew up here. I went to Claremont. Um, I went to Hoover High School. So, you know, this was, this was a long time coming. You know, our 21st century learners need this. They need to understand collaboration and these spaces, and this allows them to be the learners that we need for the future, and it allows us to be that teacher as well.